Hello and welcome to the world of manipulation. Psychologists not only try to explain, to describe and to change human behavior, we also want to predict human behavior. And now you might say, I'm a much too complicated person, I'm not predictable, I have so many facets in my personality, you can't tell what I'm going to do next. Well, let's see, let's have a little experiment. In front of you, you see five cards. All you have to do is to think of one of these cards. But don't let me influence you. For example, you might think I placed the Ace of Diamonds right in the middle because I want you to pick it. Um, or maybe the Seven of Clubs is in this group of cards because it's the only black card. So don't be influenced. Make it a random choice. If you already chose one, you may even change your mind. But now you should make your definite decision. You got one? Okay, so now I will try to say which card you chose. Okay, I guess you chose the Four of Hearts. Maybe you've been thinking about the Nine of Diamonds as well, and some of you might have chosen it. But I suppose more than likely, most of you have chosen the Four of Hearts. And the psychological mechanism that is involved in here is reactance. Quite arrogantly, I told you that you are predictable. And quite naturally, your reaction probably was, <laughs> forget it, I'm not predictable. <laughs> I will prove this guy that I'm not predictable. And ironically, by doing so, you became more predictable. So you probably didn't go for the ace of diamonds because it's right in the middle and really suspicious. And furthermore, I also mentioned the seven of clubs, which made it suspicious as well. And the king of hearts is really suspicious because it's the only picture card. And so only the four of hearts and the nine of diamonds remain. But the nine of diamonds is on the right end. So it's a little bit more suspicious than the four of hearts. And this is the reason why... I suppose most of you decided to choose the Four of Hearts. So the reactance theory, which was developed half a century ago by Jack Bream, seems to be quite helpful to predict human behavior. And the reason for this probably is that we don't want our freedom to be threatened. We don't want to be told how we are You are predictable. We don't want to be told what to do. Tidy up your room. Do this or that. We don't want that. Because we want a maximum of opportunities. And if an authority tells us what we have to do, we can become quite rebellious. For example, in the study by Pennebaker and Sanders, American Graffiti effects of authority and reactance arousal published in the personality and social psychology bulletin placard notices discouraging graffiti were hang up in 17 toilet stalls in male restrooms at an university but half of the placards were written with authority don't write on these walls under any circumstances Whereas in the other condition, the text was more friendly, 
please don't write on these walls. And according to the prediction of the reactants theory, the more authoritative request was less effective. Students had written on these walls more frequently. Another really nice example of reactance was observed in the study Territorial Defense in Parking Lots, Retaliation Against Waiting Drivers. In this study, 240 participants, in fact, they didn't know that they were participating in the study, were observed when leaving their parking lot. And while doing so, another car, of course driven by a confederate of the experimenter, was already waiting. And in some cases, the waiting driver was quite impatient and used his honk. And when he did so, on average, the leaving drivers needed much more time to leave the parking lot. Probably because they were a little bit pissed off and told themselves, he can wait, you can honk as much as you want. So again, an example of rebellious behavior. By the way, another interesting result of the study, if the waiting driver had a cheap car, for example, a Daihatsu Kuore or something like that, Male drivers decided to let him wait significantly longer. But when he was driving an expensive car, he didn't have to wait that long. But this is just a funny side note. Last but not least, we will cover the question, how can we prevent reactants? How can we prevent reactant behavior? Because in many cases, it's especially in education, it's helpful if the child won't become rebellious. For example, if it's time to go to bed or to stop playing video games. And the answer lies at the heart of the reactance theory because, as we heard, it's all about personal freedom. We want to have choices. So what do you tell a kid that doesn't want to go to bed? Well, you don't say, go to bed now. No, it's probably better to offer opportunities. Hey, it's already late. Um, you want to go to bed right now or you want to play five more minutes and then go to bed? More than likely, the child will say, no, I want five more minutes. Okay, but then you go to bed without discussion. All right? Yeah, okay. Some parents think it's an offer of opportunities when they say, You go to bed now, or I will kick your ass. <laughs> well, <laughs> you didn't get the point. But now you might say, does this really work? Well, there are study results telling us it really works, and it works surprisingly well, even with adults. So, for example, in the study, Evocation of Freedom and Compliance The But You Are Free Of technique, published in Current Research in Social Psychology. 80 participants, again, 
not knowing that they were participating in an experiment, were asked to give a little bit money for the bus. So the experimenters, usually psychology students, either asked, sorry madam or sorry sir, would you have some coins to take the bus please? The other half of participants were asked, sorry madam, would you have some coins to take the bus please? But you are free to accept or to refuse. So there was no difference in the two conditions, but this different kind of phrasing. Which really had a surprisingly huge effect. If the phrase, but you are free to accept or to refuse, was added, participants gave twice as much as in the other condition. Similar effects could be observed by the same authors five years later in their study, improving the response rate to a street survey, an evaluation of the but you are free to accept or to refuse technique. In this study, 162 participants were asked whether they were willing to participate in a short street survey. And you needn't be a psychologist to know that this sometimes can be difficult. Recruiting participants is not always easy because quite often people have to do other stuff. They are quite busy. So even when asking for a participation in a short survey, people show reactants. But again, in this study could be shown When using this magic phrase, this but you are free to accept or to refuse phrase, response rates were significantly higher. So if you are in doubt whether someone will show reactants, you should always think about offering choices. That's it for today. I hope you liked the episode. Listen to the other episodes but you are free to do so.